Mick Jagger said it best, you can't always get what you want. But when it comes to the food industry, what might fit better is you can't always get what you think you're getting. With some of the tricks the trade is using, what can end up on your table isn't what the pilgrims had in mind or what you had in mind either. Here's Jim Avila. We began with a Thanksgiving riddle. When are cranberries not cranberries at all? How about when they're dyed blue and put in your cereal bars, pretending to be blueberries? Yeah, but it looks like these blueberries inside them. What are they? Yeah. Can a turkey still be called natural when it's unnaturally pumped with a flavoring solution? <laughs> and what, for heaven's sakes, is a white tuna? It's on the sushi menu, but not in the sea. White tuna doesn't exist. There is no species called white tuna. As we approach Thanksgiving, America's traditional celebration feast, we bring you food for thought, the inside word on those outside labels. Let's start with the main course, Thanksgiving turkey. The supermarkets are filled right now with the organic, fresh, and natural. But is it still natural if the labeling also says the turkey has been injected with a solution to enhance tenderness? The USDA says, Yes, a turkey may contain a solution of water, salt, and other natural flavorings to enhance juiciness and tenderness. As long as it's labeled and the solution's natural, the turkey is considered natural. Just remember, you are paying turkey prices for the extra weight of water and salt. Now to the great cranberry blueberry hoax. Sure, they dress up any Thanksgiving Day spread, but every other day of the year, cranberries can be found dressing up themselves, like expensive blueberries. Some food manufacturers simply substitute one for the other. You should trust food manufacturers about as much as you would trust a used car salesman. Michael Jacobson's watchdog group has been battling uh, big name companies for more accurate packaging for decades. It's a fight they are not winning. The labels are designed basically to trick consumers into buying the product. He points to products like these blueberry muffin frosted mini wheats. A check of the ingredients reveals it has zero blueberries. This box of Special K fruit and yogurt cereal features images of blueberries, blackberries, and raspberries on the box, but the fruit inside the box is dried apples. Even Pop-Tarts, rarely confused as a healthy snack option, features a blueberry on its wild berry box. There are dried strawberries, apples, and pears inside, but not a blueberry in sight on the ingredients list. Oh, it doesn't have any blueberries in it. Yes, it does. No, no it doesn't. Sugar, cranberries. Oh, it says blueberry-flavored fruit pieces. Who is right? There are berries in the product, but the blueberry-flavored fruit pieces are actually made with, there they are, cranberries. I feel a little, so little Maybe it says something about us as a culture that we'll eat something that's not even the real thing. The words naturally and artificially flavored can be found right on the front of the packaging, although they're much smaller than those big juicy blueberries. You know the old saying, big print giveth, the small print taketh away. And a company would argue and say, that's sufficient to comply with the law. Next, America's literal bait and switch. What happens when there's no box to read, no list of ingredients? In other words, what about seafood? Americans love their fish, consuming more than 4.7 billion pounds of it last year. But an ABC News investigation reveals consumers often don't get what they pay for. If you go to Los Angeles and eat Red Snapper every day for the next 30 days, you will never see Red Snapper. Odds are very, very long if you just pick a random restaurant. All over America, consumers are being overcharged for less desirable fish and served seafood different from the one on the menu. I'm a marine biologist. I've been eating fish for years. And you put a nice cream lemon sauce on it, I don't think anybody can tell the difference. Mislabeling can be profitable. Just look at what a little creative branding can do. Ocean perch masquerading as red snapper. An Atlantic salmon disguised as copper river salmon from Alaska. The numbers, however, simply don't add up. 40,000 fish of Copper River salmon were sold last year. Well, sorry, but only 12,000 fish were actually caught in Copper River last year. Chef Barton Seaver is an author, National Geographic Fellow, and a graduate of the prestigious Culinary Institute of America. He recently purchased a container of world-famous Maryland blue crab, or so he thought. So this was big lump crab. These are 
big, big lumps. I mean, half dollar lumps yeah, almost. Right. Seaver sent a picture of the crab to a friend at the Maryland State Fisheries and got a two-word reply. It's Asian. And Clear, this, clearly to him right away. Clearly there. to him right away. And you know, it was embarrassing to me almost because <laughs> this is my life, this is what I do, and yet I had even been duped. Duped into paying a superior price for what he says is an inferior product that came not from Maryland, but from Indonesia. What we found in our ABC News investigation that began 18 months ago is shocking. We collected sushi in major cities. The white tuna and super white tuna samples were then sent to Nova Southeastern University in Florida for testing. Each compared against a broad DNA database of fish species to see if they were tuna at all. So collectively, uh, it's an 86% substitution rate, which is really remarkably high. 86% um, of items that were listed as white tuna turn out to be something completely different. That's right, nearly 9 out of 10 white tuna sushi was not tuna at all. That couldn't be right. So we went back to the same New York City restaurants, bought more sushi, and sent those in to be analyzed. And again, the testing revealed nearly all of the white tuna samples were really escalar, a.k.a. the X-lax fish. This fish contains some chemicals called waxy esters that can cause gastrointestinal distress. The findings did not surprise Dr. Michael Hirschfield, who conducted a much larger test for Oceana with similar results. I would be astonished if anyone buying white tuna or super white tuna at a sushi restaurant got anything other than Escalar. More numbers that are hard to swallow. 85% of all fish eaten in this country is imported, and yet less than 2% of that is actually FDA inspected. And that's the problem. There is no traceability in the system. So it's not just, I can't tell you what species it is, I can't tell you how it was farmed, or to what standards it was produced. I can't guarantee the safety of that product, and that's really why people should care.